In this video, I'm going to show you the three simple ways to document a site visit, whether you are meeting a new client or just grabbing quick info without a full survey. I'll show you a better alternative to that old gridded notebook, how to use the Apple map for large scale site studies and how portfolio trades can seriously speed things up with its built in precision tool. And if you stick around to then, I'll share the iPad case I've been using lately and it might just be the perfect on site companion. If you are someone like a contractor like or a designer, when you don't have a signed contract and you're meeting with a client for the first time, maybe it's your home and you kind of want to avoid doing unnecessary work that you're not being paid for or compensated yet. And you've just traveled a long distance to this person's house. So you kind of want to avoid going back if possible, but you do want to show some goodwill and faith just to give them something to think about. This workflow using the LiDAR scanner and the room scan feature on your iPad is just really great. So this is a 3D scan of my living room and the kitchen. And if you don't have an iPad Pro, with the LiDAR camera, like for example, my iPad doesn't have that LiDAR feature on the back of this, but my iPhone does. So I believe iPhone 12 Pro have this LiDAR feature that's compatible with Morpholo Trace. So if you don't have iPad Pro, use your iPhone and you can do the room scan and actually just bring it into Morpholo Trace like I've done here. This is a good starting point. I wouldn't like trust my life with how accurate this is. But in a pinch, it builds a spatial room uh, very quickly. So this was done entirely in two to three minutes. And uh, I want to show you what I did next was actually take a couple of critical measurements. So you don't have to start from scratch by measuring each wall. You can take maybe the longest dimension of the wall. This is probably all you need to do to bring home with you. And if you need to sketch over this, bring some ideas and show your client something just based off what you can do in 10 minutes. I would say this can save you a lot of time just visiting clients' houses in the future. This feature alone can really make that site visit worthwhile. And especially for your client, when they see you've done this extra level of work and they can actually visualize something in 2D, you don't have to do anything 3D. This can be a great workflow to capture, to document on-site information. So this is just one of three ways. So I'm gonna show you a different way of, if you were just to start from scratch, like you are used to working on a gridded paper and you're actually measuring every wall from scratch, you can instead maybe just start with a custom paper size. I'm gonna go start with a blank piece of paper. And I'm gonna start with the arc size D paper in the US. And I'm gonna assign a quarter inch to this paper because most floor plans are quarter inch, right? So when I bring this drawing in, this is already sized to the arc D size paper at a quarter inch. I would do the same thing with setting the grid to, to each grid to be a foot long. So you can actually just with this super scale ruler, do what you used to do, which is just take measurements on site and uh, I'm just doing this very quickly. I'm just showing you, if you were to measure a house like this on an actual gridded paper, that's to scale. Though this may take you just a little bit longer, but what you'll have is a accurate set of drawings that you no longer need to transcribe to AutoCAD in order to do anything else on this. And this paper size doesn't have to be, or even the scale doesn't have to be at this particular scale because you can just plot it out on a different size paper at a different scale. And you can even move your drawing around. Like if you made a mistake, if you started your drawing too close to the corner, you can move that around at any point. I see no reason to use the traditional grid paper to really you know jog down the measurements. This can be an even better way to replace what you've been doing before. And um, a last, feature or workflow is more catered towards landscape designers. So landscape, landscape designers are typically working outdoors, right? You might be interested to actually bring in a, let's call it an Apple map 
So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna just type in something local like the Apple Parks. So we're not gonna do anything here. Let's move on actually to look at this area of the site plan. So this looks like a commercial building with lots of parking lot. And this is something that you might be doing as an urban designer or a landscape designer. So the moment that you bring this in, this drawing is calibrated to scale. The scale, again, I don't depend my, li my life on this. This is something that I'll use while I'm maybe waiting for a survey to come in, but you can get a lot of ideas going because this is supposed to be in scale. Let's maybe pull up a ruler and let's zoom in a little bit more on the side of this building. Let's just take a quick measurement here. So from here to here, it looks like it's about, you know, 150 feet, which, you know, sounds reasonable actually. So 150 for the side of the building. And this side is closer to, let's say 340. So these are pretty whole measurements. So this tells me, you know, the scale feature works well. And if you want to just to get even more finer, maybe we can look at one of these parking stalls, right? Parking stalls are typically nine by 18, right? This is showing me about 16 in, in length. And let's see what the width is. It's about, yeah, it's about nine. So this is, this is a, I guess, nine by 16 feet parking stop, which is also fine. But all I'm trying to get here is you can use this scale tool and using the Apple Maps feature as a basis for your design. So if you are measuring a client's house in the backyard and you don't have anywhere to begin, this is probably where I will begin is having a sort of a overlay of the background to start off when you're actually doing your measurement with a tape measure. Okay, I wanna do a quick update on the accessories that I'm currently using. So I showed you this case from ESR. You can get it on Amazon for about $10, $11. And this is what I've been using for the past like two to three years. It's a little worn out. You can see it's a little yellow on the case, but it still holds up. This is the thing that I use to slide my iPad in, and then I'll take it out when I get home so that I have a little bit of protection. Uh, during the site visits, especially. And unfortunately, I haven't dropped my iPad, so I don't know how this would um, fare if I dropped it. But over the, I think over the last couple of weeks, Moft, the company Moft, sent me this case, which is incredible. Um, I'm already a fan of Moft. I have their, their phone wallet right here that docks my phone. I can use it as like a tripod. I also have like a dedicated um, like a computer case where it elevates my computer to like a standing height. But this case is kind of unique because it's um, it's meant to be like a kind of an origami sort of a like because you can fold it into a couple of different angles. And it comes with or actually it doesn't come with this little pencil holder. But this is, I think, a essential kind of a accessory for architects. So this allows you to magnetically attach on the side and this is all magnetic. And once you put your iPad in, this pencil will fit pretty snug into this sleeve. So there are 23 different variations of this uh, case in how it folds, but I'm just gonna show you four because that's the four I remember. So in this variation where actually, did I get this right? Okay. so. Yeah, so this is one of the variations that's really popular. Um, so this variation uh, is essentially a maybe a position where you can comfortably have it elevated on the desk and it gives you like a higher sort of elevation. So when you're watching TV on the kitchen counter, which I've been using to to do when I'm cooking, this is this is great. So this is just one of the one of the four, you can also just easily turn this over. And now this becomes like a floating station. I think this is what they call it. And you can comfortably use your pencil to draw in this elevated position. This is pretty comfortable to draw. And uh, you can see that there is actually a good amount of gap, I think two to three inches off from the table. So if you're on a construction site visit, just this gives you that protection. So your iPad is not sitting directly on something with, I don't know, nails on it. Um, the position that I use the most at home is actually this position. And this position is super cool because it actually has a kind of a place to hold your phone. And this is actually a little bit magnetic. Yeah, this is magnetic. So you can hold your phone as a reference 
to 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 look at something uh, both horizontally or vertically. Um, so this is great. I believe there's one more position if I remember. Okay, so if I there's a flap on the back, if you just uh, put it like that, this will also make your iPad to stand in this portrait position. So if you're like reading a book or a PDF or a document, um, this would be useful. I, I have not used it in this position pretty uh, lately, so I can't say that's how I would use it. And I believe there's one more. Okay, so back in the position where it's on the desk, you can see on the back of the iPad, there is actually this little kind of a tunnel and uh, from how they've advertised it, you can actually rest your your knee on this. So I think this is yeah off the page. You can't really see my knee, but you can you can actually sit on the couch and uh, and put this on your leg, which seems to be very comfortable um, in their in their marketing. So again, this is not a paid advertisement. This is just something that they send over because maybe they you know, felt sorry when they saw me using this little thing. So I do think it's uh, it's a little bit pricey for what it does, but if you value the different ergonomic positions and uh, and just how well this is made, super lightweight. I believe they actually said something like, this is the lightest product of this kind. I, I, you know, I believe them. I don't think I've tried many other products. Um, it's very, very nice to to feel it's well made and generally i am already a fan of the moft products for the phone computers and um, and other things so i do think this is a safe sort of a recommendation if you want to take a look so they do have a kickstarter campaign going on at the time of this uh, of this filming and i believe it's like already they've reached like quarter million dollars so um so this is this is what i got for now and uh when this comes on the market uh it's most likely going to be available on Amazon. So take a look. And if you want to save some money, you can pre-order it on the Kickstarter campaign. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know which of the three methods you are most likely to use yourself as an architect or a designer. And if this moth case is really worth buying in the future.